Jamie, are you surprised at all? Because there was a little bit of a lull here in day trading. We we're also, you know, facing a lot of troubles when it comes to people's pocketbooks with this inflation. So are you surprised to see so much trading come back? Uh, I'm not really. It's uh, summer vacations over. Everyone's back in school at this point. So <laughs> like that's when the activity gets to kick back up. Uh, the momentum that we saw with the uh, retail trading back uh, in January 2021 because it kind of whimpered down a little bit, but it goes in cycles just like the regular economy. There's no way that we can keep momentum going uh, the way that uh, <laughs> the way that is yep. required in order to, to, to make these types of moves. So not surprised. I was kind of expecting at some point or another that we'd see something. I, I didn't expect to see the exact same replica of what we saw last time, though. Jamie, are the drivers different or the same? The drivers appear to be the same, right? Like, we're still kind of early on into this. It's just been going on for a few days. But we have the meme component. Everyone's talking about it, the chatter, the enthusiasm. You have uh, a stock that is from a company that's relatively distressed. You have a high short float. You have <laughs> Ryan Cohen <laughs> dipping his hands into this particular stock and giving his Midas touch to it. So it's got a lot of the same components to it. Is Ryan Cohen like the king of the memes here, or are there other people that traders are looking out for to really follow into the fray when it comes to making new bets? I, I was tempted to tweet something to that effect last night because Ryan Cohen really is becoming that. Look, th there's no one individual. I, I think that uh, if a high profile individuals decide to get into a stock or, or just add to the overall thesis to find some confirmation bias, then it's always helpful. It can be him or it can be, you know, Elon Musk, which is popular with doing shenanigans. We have all sorts of different quirky public figures or CEOs or, or otherwise that have influence in the stock market. Um, so it's, it's hard to pinpoint. The thing about retail trading or Wall Street bets is that it's a collective, right? Like there's no captain of the ship saying this is where we're sailing. Uh, the power comes from the numbers. The power comes from the fact that there's collective decisions that are made. So there's no individual yep. th that uh, makes that choice. Jamie. You say that we're, we're kind of only a few days into it, which clearly we are, but it's happening pretty fast. Has it got legs? What's the sustainability story? <laughs> as long as we don't hit the pause button, uh, sorry, the disable the buy button, I think that we probably have uh, <laughs> some decent chance to keep going forward. Look, it's impossible to tell, right? Uh, I was asked uh, recently as to whether or not I'm buying it, and I'm not, not because I don't believe in it. It's because... In order to be profitable, you need to have a strategy around these uh, very volatile moments, and I personally don't have one yet. Uh, doesn't mean that other people haven't figured it out. Uh, that said, I, I have no idea. This thing could keep going up and up. I keep seeing numbers about uh, uh, price targets being in these 60s, and you know, knowing <laughs> that the people on Wall Street bets are probably aiming for the moon. To the moon. You know, I'm kind of curious here about how much of this is a lot more about the feeling behind it, you know, the fighting against the institution, Jamie, because some of this was a frustration with people who were going short before, but some of those same funds are not behaving in the same way now. They're not shorting as aggressively. Some of this was born out of frustration for firms like Citadel Securities. Does that sort of thing still exist, or has some of that abated? I'm sure that still exists, but like I said uh, towards the beginning of the segment, I'm surprised that this is able to be replicated, right? Like when asked previously as to what the next GameStop is going to be, my answer was the market is wise. They will adapt. They will not short as much, and they're definitely not going to go on a roadshow when they do decide to short sell. And they have. They've gone secretly short selling, et cetera. Um, but I'm surprised that they haven't put the mechanisms in place, not, not they meaning regulators, they meaning the, the other market participants like the stock options, market makers that increase the implied volatility, make it more expensive to basically do these maneuvers. Uh, so, so I am surprised that they're allowing the same thing to happen, but it is actually happening, um, even if these institutions are now shifted their approach a little bit. Jamie, does it matter if the backdrop is different? The Fed is tightening. Uh, you've got people talking about and worrying about a recession. Inflation is a theme. People are talking about and have seen recently a bear market. We've clearly bounced off our, our June lows. Does, does the backdrop 
Previously, I could, the, there was logic to the, to the backdrop. There were a lot of people at home. Uh, they had, they had um, the objective of going out there and maybe having some fun as well as making some investments. This time round, the, the backdrop feels different. So if, if you overlay that different backdrop, what does that tell us about the sustainability story here again? I, I'm really curious. People are, as you say, the end of the summer's here. People are, people are back making these sort of trades. But are we just going to have a series of waves of these kinds of trades that are almost completely divorced from the fundamentals that are happening in the economy? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say the only thing you're missing is the discounted cash flow analysis for, for these stocks. No, th th that you said it right towards the end. It's it's the fundamentals. Like when you go into your broker, it's like, do you want to, do you think the stock price is going to go up or do you think it's going to go down? It's buying and selling. It's supply and demand. That's the number that we get to see as far as the price is concerned. And for the people whose stock options are expiring on Friday, uh, no, it's irrelevant. <laughs> Right, like it's these like short term moves. Um, there is, I do believe that towards the very, very big picture, there's a price discovery and market efficiency and all sorts of things that do uh, adhere to fundamentals a little bit more. But the mm -hmm. people that are into meme stocks, just like memes come and go quickly, same thing goes with these prices. Uh, they could potentially sustain. GameStop is still not sustainable at the price that it's at if you use fundamental analysis. So who's to tell? At this mm -hmm. point, supply and demand, uh, you also have activist investors that can decide if we want to have it be this price and we will hold it here until it's worth that price, right? So right. Jamie, you know, speaking of pricing, you, you take a look at something like the Round Hill meme ETF and that tracks a bunch of popular meme stocks, if you will, but it's not rising like you're seeing uh, this really uh, a big group of traders surround around Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm so curious as to what you're seeing as the next big trades for this group. Yeah, sh shout out to Willa Hershing. He's actually uh, uh, a big fan of Wall Street bets. Look, I've, I've always had a criticism towards meme ETFs, at least the way that they're currently uh, structured because of certain regulatory uh, constraints that exist. And they're, I, I, I'm not super enthusiastic about the concepts. Why? Because a meme stock comes and it goes and it's quick. An ETF has to like, restructure, rebalance, file for changes, add a thing to it by which time the meme stock is over. Uh, so I, I, I think the I, the concept behind these ETFs is good, but the execution isn't. And as you just pointed out, I doubt Bed Bath & Beyond has the proper weighting on it within that one or any of the other ones. I know that uh, Dave Portnoy has got one called, um, I forget, but uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of people trying to go for that and the execution is just not quite there on the mechanics. Jamie, why am I not seeing the same thing in crypto? I Bitcoin's up off its lows, but not much. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know why Bitcoin wasn't up when inflation is going through the roof, right? I don't know the answer to that. I can uh, uh, say that it's also supply and demand, but you'd also think that the enthusiasm behind retail traders, which tend to also gravitate heavily towards crypto, would be doing that as well. Uh, I don't know the answer to that, and I would love to.